It's our story. Eleanor Smith, Atlanta, Georgia. See, I don't care about mirrors. And I don't care about counters. I think that that is a distraction. I think that when you get into that long list of features, it's ideal, but you can't ever get it into what's... I'm less interested in one house sitting in one acre lot it goes the whole nine yards, but every other house around it doesn't even have a wide door. See what I'm saying? My vision is the basics need to be everywhere. If we try to get all those other features everywhere, it's just not going to happen right away. Is this thing on? Oh, it doesn't matter. I know you guys are going to do a lot of editing. But so, what, what, what is compelling? Because I've paid the price personally. And everyone who's used a chair as a child or a young adult or, or a full-grown adult pays the price of literally not being able to fit through the bathroom door. Think what that would be like if there were a two-by-four nailed across every bathroom door in a house you went to dinner. How comfortable would you be? I mean, the qualitative difference between whether you can see in a mirror or not and whether you can get in the bathroom door is huge. It's like the difference between having protein in your diet or a brownie. It's, it's, do you see what I'm saying? It's, um, it, it's the success of the visitability movement to date come, came about because the most important features were hit on. And the secondary features were not so much called unimportant as called much less crucial much less crucial. You don't, you aren't kept from coming home from the hospital after crushing your hips because you can't reach the cupboard to get your coffee. You're kept from coming home to, from the hospital because you can't get in your house and you don't have time to hire a contractor to build that $10,000 ramp. So the level of harsh fallout from a couple of features is so much worse than, the, the, um, than some of the other features that could be named, which are good in and of themselves. But I want people to be able to come home from the hospital. I want people to be able to go to their sister's house for the family reunion. I want that for every person with a mobility impairment, whether they're 90 years old using a walker or whether they're three years old with spina bifida, um, soon to be too big to carry in and out. Visitability hits on the basics, and that message has resounded with the grassroots disability movement. The grassroots disability people have uh, worked on visitability all over the country. You can call it inclusive home design. You can call it nothing. You can call it get in and pee. Doesn't matter what the name is. What matters is that we get these features away from the idea of special and into that 500 tract house that's going up on the edge of every city. That's the vision. Um, you know, as a kid, I loved to play in the neighborhood. I wasn't a spoiled child, really, at all. I was one of five, and small town, so we could run around, and I was out in my wheelchair playing with the kids, running, up, running wild up and down the streets. But if they decided to, to go in one of their houses, that I couldn't follow them. I would be in the yard. Uh, and when I was a teenager, I remember, I remember my cat howling in the room. I think he's crying from the, from the bedroom. Sorry about this cat distraction. The, the last thing is I remember it was right after you had said the thing about being, about stuck in, the being yard. in the yard. Yeah, I remember you know being a little older and having this nice light green new dress and being at a party and usually like a lot of other disabled people, I 
Didn't drink hardly anything before I went to a party because I knew I wouldn't be able to use the bathroom. Uh, but at this time I did have to use the bathroom and I just, I didn't know what to do. I saw that the door was narrow. I went down the hall and I had to get out of my chair and scoot across the floor in my nice new light green dress. I was literally perspiring, not out of hard work, but out of shame, I think you would call it, to be crawling on the floor in your nice new party dress when you're 16 years old and scooting on into the bathroom, struggling up on my knees, getting up on the commode and praying that nobody would come down that hall and see me on the floor. That's any person who's used a wheelchair for a good number of years, either they stay home or they go out in public and get humiliated or harassed by, by architecture. In those earlier years, things are changing. So I, I began to see that it's not hard to make a house with access if you start out to do it. I'm talking about the basic. You know, first builders would tell me all these hard problems there would be. But I'm, not, I'm an English major, not an architect. But you know, I would look at, at uh, the new McDonald's and I would say, well, they did it. Can this really be that hard? And gradually over time, it became clear that the methods for creating basic access in homes is not, architecturally, it's not difficult, it's not expensive. The battle is to get it to occur in practice. Um, one of Concrete Change's early successes was the Atlanta chapter for Habitat for Humanity. Um, it was not an instant victory by any means. We worked long and hard before we made any progress. Um, when we first went to Habitat for Humanity and suggested they try putting access in new houses where the buyer wasn't disabled, um, I remember the director leaned back, folded his arms across his chest. He was not interested. He said, we build for poor people, not disabled people, and we'll build a special disabled house uh, if, if someone is disabled. And um, we persisted, and I do mean we, not me. It was myself and a core of people. The It's Our Story Project is a national effort to make disability history public and accessible. Visit us at www.itsourstory.org or on the It's Our Story Project YouTube channel.